My name's Alan Hostet. I'm 89 years old. Be 90 my birthday. Well, I had my first cotton crop when I was 14 years old. My grandparents raised me. My dad died when I was nine years old. And they gave me 10 acres for a cotton crop, told me I could, whatever cotton I could make on it, I could have. So we still farmed with horses and mules. But my neighbor had an old F-20 farm all tractor and I hired him to plow the ground for me, the 10 acres. And then I hired it with mules and planted it with a one row planter, cultivated it. And I come to the gin and got my cotton seed and I didn't even know what kind of cotton seed to get. But the gin, a man that owned the gin was named Fred Varner. He said, Alan, I've got some Akela 8 cotton seed. He said, I'd like for you to try it. So I did. That cotton come up and got nearly as high as my head went to putting on cotton, of course cotton puts on around the bottom to start with. And it started putting on the bottom and I thought, man, I'm going to ring the bell. <laughs> it got up about a foot from the bottom and the bowl weevils hit it and it didn't put another thing from there up. <laughs> but there's four, five, six bowls made right on the bottom of the stalk. I hand pulled that cotton, and I mean I picked up pieces on the ground and shook the dirt off from them too. Loaded it on a wagon, and I got enough to make a bale. And I brought it to town here to Grandfield, and I got here about two o'clock. And the gin, when I first got here, was broke down, but they got it fixed pretty quick. And he said, Alan, I can't get to your cotton till in the morning. Well, <laughs> I was 10 miles from home on a wagon and team. So I took my mules loose from the wagon and tied them on the side. I got up on the wagon. I got between them two cotton sacks and that's where I spent the night. But anyway, I got my cotton ginned off about 10 o'clock the next day. And back then, they had cotton buyers that come to the gin. And there was a guy come out there, a cotton buyer, and they'd stretch it between their fingers and stuff. <laughs> he stretched it and said, Alan, I'll give you eight cents a pound for it. And the bale made right at 600 pounds of cotton. Anyway, to wind up with, I had $48 out of that bale of cotton. And I was the richest man in Tillman County. <laughs> It was terrible. The wells all went dry and early. Ponds all went dry. <laughs> Dirt would hit. The chickens would go to roost. It was that dark. You know, you know the sun could be shining and you'd see that dirt coming and it looked like it's rolling. And when it hit, you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. You'd think it had just hit up half a mile high all at once. But when you first saw it coming, it'd be rolling and it might not be over 50 foot high. And it'd just keep getting higher. I, I guess it got up 
several thousand feet because it went to New York. And them's the people I worry about is the younger farmers. Because most of them, if they haven't got somebody to help them get started, they just can't do it. Because you can spend three or four hundred thousand dollars real easy starting farming nowadays. And no guarantee whatsoever. Farming is just like rolling dice or going to the casino. You plant it, you work it, and you hope to gather it. Sometimes you do and sometimes you don't. Now three years ago, and we made a real good wheat crop. It was good that year. The weather was good. The wheat crop price was good. But two years later, the next year we didn't make nothing. The second year after that, we made an average wheat crop, but the first year we made that, we got eight and nine dollars a bushel for wheat. The next time we made a little wheat crop, we got three three dollars a bushel for it. And them, that sound the kind of stuff kills you, son. It's it's a real good life if you don't weaken, and you got to. You got to know how to count your money. Because one year you're going to make a good crop come out ahead. And you think, well, I need a new car and I need a new tractor and I need this and that. You better be saving part of that back because it'll be a year when you're going to need it. But, but like I say, it's just like rolling dice. Sometimes it'll come up seven and sometimes it'll come up snake eyes. Nothing out of it.